From the first time I played around with data in Excel, to landing my first data analyst job at Microsoft, to now actually leading a data team, there's been a lot of learnings across that journey. I've spent countless hours browsing and studying courses on Udemy to actually learning different technologies and languages. There's been a lot of learnings and mistakes I've made across that journey. So if you're looking to land your first data analyst job or looking to switch careers or just interested in data analytics as a whole, then in this video, I'll be covering the essentials that you need to learn to land a data analyst role with or without experience. And the second half will be a more detailed breakdown of exactly what you need to learn with the topics and modules to cover 80% of roles. So without further ado, let's get started. When I first started this journey, one of the first challenges that I had was all the conflicting information online. Whether that was podcasts, books, videos, there was a lot of different things being said. Data is a very fast moving industry. All the videos posted online are limited to the time they are posted in. In 2024, AI has been a big boom. If you watch a video from 2022 or 21 even, you're not going to get much mention of AI. So it's very important that you start off your journey whenever you're watching this video with what skills are in demand in your industry and your area. So look at real job postings. After you've gone through live postings, you're probably going to see some similar technologies or tools keep appearing up. Well, the ones that I'm going to mention in this video are proven and battle tested. They've been here for years and they're probably not going anywhere. So when I look back at my career, the first thing that I started off with is Excel. If I could go back, would I still start off with Excel? I actually would. Excel is a bread and butter tool in pretty much every organization. While it's not necessarily a data visualization or data analytics tool, it has a lot of those capabilities and it is used for that. You'll be surprised how many processes are actually run in Excel. Being able to quickly manipulate and transform data in Excel, put together pivot tables and charts, that will take you a long way. Excel does have its limitations. It's not necessarily a data analytics tool. And when you start working with large volumes of data, it can become painfully slow and difficult to work with. This is where we start to use BI tools, but we'll come to that later. The next thing that I would recommend you learn is SQL or SQL. People call it different things. SQL is battle tested. It stands for structured query language and it's the language used to manipulate relational databases. That essentially just means data is stored somewhere in a certain way. You use SQL to get that data and do things with it. SQL is like Toyota. It's not flashy. It's probably not going to win any awards, but what it's good at, it does very well. It's reliable. It's been around for a very long time and it just performs. When you need to quickly access data, put it together and then actually do things with it, SQL is probably going to be the language you use as a data analyst. And unlike other languages, it's not too difficult to learn. And what I'm sharing here is essentially just what you need to get started as a junior. It's going to go a long way. So I mentioned earlier that Excel has some limitations. This is where BI tools come in. BI stands for business intelligence and BI tools allow you to do reporting capability essentially. That means make charts and visuals. There's loads of different BI tools on the market and I will say essentially they all do the same thing and under the hood work similarly, but they are different in sort of how you might create a certain visual. If you're going to pick a tool, I would suggest either working with Power BI or Tableau. They both consistently come in the most frequent job postings. And you might have seen my channel name is called the Power BI Guy, where I primarily focus on teaching Power BI, but I am expanding to more areas now, such as SQL, Python, etc. So if you're finding this useful, it's a good time to say this. Please do subscribe, it helps the channel. If you're at a stage where you're comfortable with those, you're probably now ready to start looking for roles. But landing your first data analyst role can be very difficult because you don't have experience. So this is where you now have to look at projects. One great thing about the data world is there's an array of data sets online available, whether that's from music to shopping, literally any industry or anything, there's data online available for it. So what that means is you take those data sets and you start to ask it questions like you might do in a real life business setting. So for example, on a sales data set, how many sales do we have? What's causing these sales? What time of years, etc. This is when you can start honing in on your skills and actually start to demonstrate that you know what you're doing. This is where having a portfolio comes in really handy. But what do I mean by a portfolio? And I don't mean paintings or actually having a briefcase full of different things. A portfolio is essentially a means to demonstrate what you can do. So this could be from actually getting a data set, why you pick that data set, to then transforming it because data is usually not clean and doing things to it demonstrating what you've actually done in the different steps of that journey from actually getting the data, actually asking it the questions and why you ask those questions to then producing the insights and the analysis afterwards. 
you need to publish that or make that available for your potential employers to see. If you don't have experience, landing that first role is very hard and is going to be a long journey. When I've seen really good portfolios where someone's broken down their thought process, it really has made them look good in my eyes. Made it to this part of the video. Well, now I'm going to cover the exact specifics that you need to learn and the resources that you can use to actually learn them. And I've put together this data analyst roadmap. And essentially, these are all the tools and languages that I mentioned and the exact topics that you need to cover to be proficient in data analysis. And essentially, if you learn this, you'll be able to take on a data analyst role. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting off with Excel, there's a great website called trumpexcel.com. And essentially this website um, has a module based system once again, and you can see it has all of the topics and 20, 30 minute videos for all the various topics that it has. And it starts off from the absolute basics to then going into pivot tables and Excel formulas. It's a really good resource. And in terms of what I've recommended you learn, it's pretty much that. Understanding how to use Excel, some basic formatting and organization, your formulas that you need to know are mentioned, and then some advanced functions for a little bit more specific scenarios, but, but alas, they are used quite often, these functions, so it's worth knowing. So moving on to SQL, Code Academy has a very good free course. So usually you have to pay for their courses, but they have a free SQL course, and it's actually really good. So let me open that up. And we can see we have a few different modules. So manipulation is all about access data, creating tables and updating that. Not so relevant to an analyst per se, but then we have uh, queries and how to actually start writing queries and pulling data. And then aggregations, so a section on calculations, things like sum, count, average, etc. And then how you actually join them. And those three topics there are pretty much what you need to know for a junior analyst role. And once again, without going into the specifics of this, we want a basic introduction of SQL so you understand what it is, how to call and select tables and do some filters. Then we have your aggregations once again, so your typical calculations that you might do. And a key component of this will be joining tables and how you actually join tables um, in SQL because that's very common and something that you have to do. So covering these elements should be covered by that course. This is very important as this is the baseline for SQL and as an analyst, you'll be using these functions all the time. So you have to understand this. So moving on to Power BI, there's a great course on YouTube by Enterprise DNA. So if I just um, open up their channel, hopefully it's not an advert, but Enterprise DNA have a 40 part or 40 or 50 part playlist for Power BI and getting started with it. Now it is a few years old, so it's about four years old now, but fundamentally Power BI is the same with some new additions, obviously, but what this course covers is still relevant today. So really good series. It's really useful. I really recommend Enterprise DNA. They've got a really great course on Power BI. And it's probably the most comprehensive on YouTube. And then looking at the modules, I start off with data preparation. So that's loading your data. How do you do that? Transformation. So when you need to do things to it, make changes, etc. Moving on to visualization, so how do you actually put together charts? And then you have some more advanced scenarios with matrix tables, conditional formatting, etc. And if I'm honest, there is a DAX element of this missing, but with the enterprise DNA course, that should cover all the DAX elements that you need to know as well. And the fourth one, which is a portfolio, well, a portfolio is essentially I've mentioned where you show what you can do. And in this document, I've specified um, how you can go about doing that. So what you want to start off with. So you have your problem statement, uh, your data sources, what your insights are. And it literally just maps out um, what you can do to make a whole portfolio. Uh, if you want this document, you can reach out to me in LinkedIn and I'm able to share it. But what I'll do, I'll make a specific video on portfolios and how to create a good one. So do subscribe and that will be in that video.